The GPU wars just got a whole lot more interesting. The AMD RX 9070 XT is here. This card is actually going head-to-head -head with NVIDIA's latest offerings. The RX 9070 XT comes in cheaper than the RTX 5070 Ti while delivering competitive performance. But is it too good to be true? AMD's GPU lineup has been all over the place for years. They've struggled with pricing, ray tracing performance, and driver support. But the 9070 XT is different. This card is priced at $599, making it significantly cheaper than the RTX 5070 Ti while delivering comparable rasterization performance. Even the non-XT version, sitting at $550, holds its own against NVIDIA's standard 5070. And if you're tired of NVIDIA's VRAM-cutting shenanigans, AMD has an answer for that too. Both the 9070 XT and 9070 come with 16 gigabytes of DDR6 memory compared to the 12 gigabytes on the RTX 5070 Ti. If you're planning to game at 1440p or even 4K, that extra VRAM can be the difference between a smooth experience and stutters when you least expect them. When it comes to 1440p rasterization, the RX 9070 XT is punching well above its weight. It nearly matches the RTX 5070 Ti, but at a $150 lower price point. In some games like Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, it even outperforms NVIDIA's 5070 non-tie version by a solid margin. The 1% lows, those moments where a game suddenly stutters, are slightly worse than NVIDIA's cards. But that's something AMD could optimize post-launch with driver updates. What about 4K? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. While AMD has given these cards enough VRAM to handle 4K ultra textures, raw horsepower still matters. The 9070 XT struggles to maintain 60 FPS at 4K in newer AAA games, but it still does better than NVIDIA's 5070 Ti, thanks to that extra VRAM preventing bottlenecks. AMD's ray tracing performance has traditionally been a weak spot, and while the 9070 XT is a major improvement, it's still a step behind NVIDIA's 50 series cards. In games like Black Myth Wukong, the RTX 5070 Ti completely wipes the floor with the 9070 XT, holding a 30 to 40% lead in performance. That said, AMD is no longer two generations behind in ray tracing. In Cyberpunk 2077 and Alan Wake 2, the 9070 XT stays close to the 5070 Ti, proving that AMD has finally made meaningful strides in RT performance. The big issue? Game support. NVIDIA's DLSS 4.0 has much wider adoption than AMD's FSR 4, and while FSR 4 is a huge step up from FSR 3, it's still not as widely supported. This means if you are not implementing any third-party FSR 4 solutions, ray tracing on AMD cards is going to be a hit or miss depending on the game. AMD has made huge efficiency improvements, but it's still not quite on par with NVIDIA's latest Blackwell architecture. The 9070 XT draws around 309 watts, which is higher than its rated TDP and 20% more power than the RTX 5070 Ti, despite offering similar performance in many titles. That said, thermals are under control, and partner cards from Sapphire, Asus, and XFX are keeping temperatures in check. If you're running a 750-watt power supply unit or higher, you won't have any issues. While gaming is the main focus, a lot of people use GPUs for content creation and AI workloads. This is where NVIDIA still dominates. AMD has improved its media encoder, making AV1 streaming look much better. But NVIDIA's NVENC is still the gold standard. In AI workloads, the RX 9070 XT gets absolutely dunked on by even the RTX 4070 Super, let alone NVIDIA's 50 series cards. If you're planning to use this for AI-based applications like stable diffusion or machine learning, NVIDIA is still the better choice. Now, maybe AMD is offering a compelling mid-range option with the RX 9070 XT, but whether it's the right choice depends on your priorities. 
It delivers strong rasterization performance than NVIDIA's equivalent, but there are still trade-offs to consider. If you want the best price-to-performance ratio at 1440p, 16 gigabytes of RAM for future-proofing, and are planning on Linux gaming, nothing can beat RX 9070 XT. However, if ray tracing is a priority, you need AI and productivity performance, or you're unsure how the GPU market will shift in the coming months, you might want to hold off for now. If AMD can keep these in stock at MSRP, this could be the best mid-range GPU of 2025. But with NVIDIA's 50 series looming, AMD will need to keep refining drivers and push more games to support FSR4 if they want to stay competitive.